I'm going to be going through a little bit of a rundown of how Smithfield made all their decisions when they decided to go to group housing in 2007. What to do, what not to do, some pros and cons associated with different housing systems, and how we got to where we are so that you maybe don't make the, some of the, main, the same mistakes that we did early on, and so that we can kind of fix that up front. So here's just kind of a background or history on SOW housing. Group housing really is not a new concept. If you look back at some of the history, we've had just station stalls. Actually, here's a picture from the 60s. We've had outdoor on huts and pastures. We've had outdoor hoop structures, tethers, individual stalls, turnaround stalls, small group pens. It's just relative to today that we're now going from a gestation stall to group housing. But we've been in group housing before. It's just trying to retrain ourselves on what worked and what didn't work with today's modern pigs and genetics and how to feed them. So what are some of the welfare problems associated with stalls? And when I'm talking welfare problems, I'm typically mentioning perceived human perception of what's going on with animal welfare. A paper from John McGlone in 2004 said that sows, most sows at that time do not simply fit in gestation stalls. Doesn't meet them able to lay in a lateral recumbency without touching the other stall, meaning utter to the back of the other stall or sow. Also limit socialization, not allowing natural behavior to occur. Even though that natural behavior is aggression, it's still considered a natural behavior. Limits movements, shoulder lesions, stiffness to joints, can't turn around are some of the consequences associated with those stalls. But also there's welfare problems with groups as well. And so you have to consider that none of these systems are actually the absolute best. And I wish we had one out there that said we can eliminate aggression, we can still give them natural behaviors, turn around, but we're not quite there. Some of the welfare problems with groups, even though it is a natural behavior, it's still aggress aggression or agonistic encounters. Body condition score variation. Individual stalls allows us to feed our sows individually, whatever they need. When we have a boss sow, she tends to get more, more feed than the submissive animals. Mounting behavior can cause some leg and structural issues. And vulva biting can also be a consequence of group housing. What's the science say? So there has been about greater than 27 scientific articles in the last 20 years comparing group housing to individual stalls, measuring animal well-being. That's one thing is the terminology to use is that welfare is the perception, my perception of walking in and looking at that sow and what I think is going on. Well-being is a scientific assessment. What is her performance from her last parity? What is her growth rate? What is her stress response, cortisol levels? Immune response, behavioral, that's a state of being. So when scientifically assessed, the majority of those papers show no differences between individual stalls and group housing. So most of this change is driven by human perception. And I get asked all the time, specifically if I'm in a conversation with animal rights activists, well, Smithfield, you chose to go to group housing. You should be saying that you're improving animal welfare. No, I will never say that we're improving animal welfare by putting them in group pens. We chose to make that decision because our customers asked us to. So what are some items that producers need to consider before implementing group housing, if they choose to implement group housing? Some of the things that we had to make decisions on, equipment. So are you using an existing facility? Are you retrofitting an older barn? Or is this going to be a new, a new building? What's the reliability and durability of your existing equipment if you are using a retrofit? How's your gates? How's your penning? Or what is the reliability of your new system you're considering implementing as well? What about flooring? Slat gap width is a big one that we've struggled with. Some of our older breeding barns have an inch and a half slat gap width. You put group pens in there with a bunch of gilts, you're going to have some issues because during that aggression, they're using their legs for leverage. A dew claw could get in there and cause some issues with legs. 
Training and technical support. If you are choosing to implement a new system like ESF, make sure you speak to your manufacturer about technical support and training of your staff. Cost of the system. Feed management, how are you going to monitor that variation in body condition scores? Safety of your personnel, we still want our people to walk the pens daily. How are we going to get them to do that? And vaccination, vaccinating group house sows is a little bit more dangerous than it was in individual stalls. How steep is that learning curve for your staff? And sustainable management, do you have a lot of people turning over in your farm? that you're going to have to be training new people all the time. If you have people in there for 30 years who've been using individual stalls for 30 years, simplicity may be the best way to go. What's your existing facility structure? Understanding what the limitations are. Like I mentioned, slat gap width. Slatted floor, solid flooring, what's the proportion of that? Existing feed systems, location and operational, like I said, what's the What's the reliability of your old feed system? Has it been in there for 20 years? Maybe it's time while you're retrofitting. Go ahead and get a new feed system in there. And square footage, so how much space are you going to lose? So here's kind of a layout or some blueprints of how we've done the majority of our conversions of individual stalls to group housing. So this is showing the typical layout where we had two stalls back to back the slatted portion of the flooring and solid portion feed drop, a trough water. We cut off the back portion of the stall. So here we had 500 crate spaces. This brought us down to 404 sow spaces. But reliability and durability of the equipment is gonna have a big impact. You're making a huge investment in whatever you're changing to. You wanna make sure that it's going to be reliable and durable with you for the next 15, 20 years. You don't want to be replacing things all the time. And this is a huge investment. So electronic sow feeders, for example, here, doors to sow feeder not opening and closing properly could be an issue. Automatic dispensing bowl, that's a moving part to come out and feed the sow. RFID reader or sensors, power supplies, what happens if power goes out? How am I going to feed all these sows with a couple ESFs? Plan B, what's your plan B? And that's for any housing system. The free access stall, some of the issues with that could potentially be moving locking mechanism, that back gate opens and closes, springs. We've had some free access stalls within seven years, we have to be replacing the springs on them because those gates are moving every day. With the small group pens, like I said, a lot of people are using existing feed lines, but are those 20 years old? Are they as accessible as they were before when you didn't have group housing? Having to replace those. So your equipment has to keep working properly every day to make sure that your sows are getting fed the right way. Otherwise, they're going to have to keep going through aggression bouts trying to get into that feeder. Some training and technical support. If you are choosing to implement a system that's a little more complicated than your skill level, request on-farm training. That's what the manufacturers are there for. Ask them for assistance in training your staff. Ask them for existence, what is the local support like? Can I have someone locally trained to fix these systems for myself? Or can you tell me how to fix them? Also, if there is no local support, how long will it take? If one of these things goes down, how long is it going to take for you to get here? Ability to remote access into the computer, so internet connectivity. Any of these downtime will impact your animal's well-being. Feeding clearly is important to limit fed sows. What's the cost of the equipment? So here's some calculations from us. Small group pen with quarter or half stalls. So this is from a retrofit. Costing anywhere between $225 to $275 a sow. So obviously you can use some existing facilities there, cut off the back of your existing stalls use your existing feed lines. It does use a lot of gates, which would mean in the future more to replace. Maybe me replacing some feed lines down the road. Your ESF system, 265 to 295 a sow. Does not need a lot of penning. That's one of the positive things about it, which lowers your costs. 
but you are adding cost because of the electronic equipment and you're using RFID tags now in all your cells. Your free access system is probably your most costly system and that's between $305 to $320 a cell and that really comes down to primarily all these costs is in space. You have a full length stall and you also have to have the space in order for them to turn completely around. And you also have moving parts. That back gate closes and opens all the time. So you need to consider that issue with replacing those parts as well. Feed management. Obviously we've all heard in some presentations today that feed is about 60 to 70 percent of the cost of raising pigs. So consider how we can reduce our feed wastage on how we're going to be um, housing our animals. So a trickle feeding system slowly delivers feed to reduce competitive aggression, while our small group pens with floor feeding actually increases feed wastage. If you put it all just on the solid portion of your floor and you drop feed, you're going to have sows moving over that feed, getting through the slats, probably the highest feed wastage you can get. Manage feed drops carefully and calibrate often. You'll probably hear me say this several times. Body condition score has gotten away from us several times, and how that happens is because we're not calibrating our feed drops, or we're spot checking. We'll go in a barn and say, I'm going to go calibrate five of my drops. It's set at four pounds, but it's actually delivering five. Go calibrate your feed drops in every single one of them at least once a year, or else body condition score can run away with you. The ESF really can probably provide the best Feed, manage it from, feed management from an individual sow perspective. And another thing we're looking into today is if feeding fiber increases gut fill for a group house sows to reduce aggression. And depending on the markets is cheaper. So this is a system that is a small group pen, 10 sows per pen. They are feed is delivered on the solid portion of the floor in the middle. The water is in the back corner up here, and we were looking at floor space allowance. So here's 24 square feet and 18 square feet per sow. We know that mixing and hierarchy aggression is going to occur. It has to occur, and that's fine. But what we need to try to prevent is aggression that occurs during feeding events. And so here, all the feed is in the middle. And what we learned from this study is that the sows and actually the larger group pen had to walk farther to get to the drinker. This was a fiber feed. They had motivation to want to eat, drink, eat, drink, eat, drink, instead of binge on feed and then go binge on water. There would actually be more aggression because they'd go to the back of the water and then fight for their spot back here where the feed was. So just think of that interaction of, okay, fiber feeding, where's my water placement, and what kind of feed system I'm just having drop feeding all things to be considered. Other ways to reduce competitive aggression can be stalls, quarter, half, full length of the body. Your free access system locks the sow in individually, really preventing that from happening. The ESF, like I said, is probably the best for controlling um, individual feed for your sow. However, there's still aggression around the feeder entrance. Like I mentioned, Placement of your resources, where is your water, where is your feed dropped? So maintaining your healthy body condition to prevent this. Your body condition variation occurs the most in small group pens. This can be prevented, like I said, with either using a trickle feeding system, a slow release of feed. But I mentioned use some form of body condition scoring. And I'll say it several more times, calibrate your feed drops often. Because both heavy and thin sows is going to have a negative impact on her long-term productivity and longevity. Electronic sow feeding system does provide individual feed ration. The free access system does a really good job because it locks the sows in so they can get their portion. However, these pigs are smart. They always figure out a way, don't they? So the boss sow will typically go lock herself in. They all lock themselves in. The boss sow is going to eat as fast as she can, hurry up and get out, and go what we call gate checking. She goes to every other sow to see who forgot to lock the gate. And once she does that, she always finds one who didn't lock the gate all the way, 
We'll start revolvo biting or tail biting until that one backs out and she can get the rest of the feed. They always find a way. Human safety. Obviously, that's another thing we wanted to consider as well. Making sure that our employees are comfortable doing their job of what we're asking them to do. Especially with group pens, we want to make sure that they're still having access to the sows, easy access to the sows, to walk the pens daily. So one thing we did, we think about it, how many pens are in one of these gestation barns? That's one individual who has to either climb over a hundred some pens or gates or has to lift it up and move it to get inside the pen. That's a safety concern. It's time consuming to do those things. So we started putting in what we call walkthrough gates. So this just allows the person, this gate here, flaps open and closed, allows the person to slide through, and also helps them if there is an issue when they're vaccinating to hurry up and escape from that pen as well. So we, any farm staff, loves having a farm that has walkthrough gates on it. Just easy to access the animals. And for safety purposes. A learning curve is something you need to consider as well. I love this cartoon. I say that applies to my dad <laughs> with everything, and I'm sure that relates to, some, to all of you too. Implementing a new system without proper training can impact animal well-being. And so how much time it takes you to really learn and figure out how to get the system functioning, that's going to have an impact on your animal well-being because you may not be feeding properly. You may not have your timing down properly. You need to shorten that learning curve as much as possible. So do research on proper management techniques. Once again, seek out your manufacturer. They have a lot of information on it. Contact them first. State Extension Support and National Pork Board has a lot of information on it. And talk to other producers. But make sure all your staff is trained and trained equally. If you have someone who wasn't trained working on a weekend, sows didn't get fed at the right time, what happens? That one individual is holding back your productivity. Get everyone up to the same par. Sustainable management. Implement what you and your staff are capable of managing. And so, obviously, I'm not going to go try and do computer software. I'm not a software or computer person whatsoever. I shouldn't expect some of my people on the farm to be doing some high-tech things that they're not capable of doing either. Also, you need to consider how much employee turnover you have. With a lot of our farms, we have people wanting to move farms all the time. Even if I have a farm manager who's a great manager on one farm, he wants to move to another farm that's closer to his house, so his commute shorter. So there's constantly people rotating. I need it to be simplistic so that farm manager A can go to farm B and pick up exactly where he was. Determine what are the issues and then develop a solution. So for the example here with the walkthrough gates, people were complaining. I have to climb over all these gates every single day. I have to pick up these gates to get them through there. Okay, well, let's figure out a way that you can have easy access to the sows to do your job. Because what's going to happen? Eventually, they're just not going to do it. So find a solution to the problem. So I'm going to go through now some implementation pros and cons to different housing systems that we had to consider and what our perspective was on it. The group pen floor feeding, kind of like I showed that video. Simple pen design, some of the advantages, very simple, very easy to retrofit, very low cost, easy to learn, no internet, technical support needed. Some disadvantages though, you have a significant feed wastage. A lot of this is going to go up in the pit. Animal well-being, you're going to have probably the highest amount of aggression during feeding, and you're going to have quite a variation in your body condition scores on these kinds of systems. But at the end of the day, any studies that's evaluated this, it does meet all the standards of well-being if it is managed properly. Any system can be managed extremely well or very poor. So this can still be provide optimal animal well-being. Group feeding using feeding stalls. This is about 80% of the group housing systems that we use is a small group pen with 6 to 12 sows in it with shoulder to half of the body stanchions. It's a relatively simple pen design. 
for our retrofits. Um, durable, reliable, you may have some issues with feed systems if you didn't change those out. Relatively easy to learn, no internet, relatively low cost, limited feed wastage, because now you're dropping the feed on the solid portion here, it's a little more controlled. And animal well-being, you still have the feeding cells to reduce some of the aggression, but I'm not going to say it fix it completely. Like I said, disadvantages of animal well-being, you're still going to have a high variation of your body condition score. So in a case like this or the previous one, calibrating your feed drop is important for the pen, per pen. Your free access system. So advantages to free access, which we do have several of these systems as well. It's very easy to learn. The sows pick up on it real quick, can figure out how to use it. No internet or technical support needed. Limited feed wastage. From an animal well-being standpoint, you do reduce a lot of your aggression during feeding until they figure out gate checking behavior. And variation in body condition score is kind of controlled for a little bit as well. Your disadvantages, the dura durability and reliability of the equipment. As I've mentioned, we've had some of these in for seven to eight years and we're already having to replace the moving back gates on them and the springs that have them move up and down. So anytime moving parts occur, there's probably an opportunity for things to break as well. This is probably one of the highest costing systems too. Like I said, that's predominantly due to space. But if managed properly, has perfect standards of well-being, but can be managed poorly as well. Your electronic sow feeding system. So some advantages here. You do limit your feed wastage, and this is probably the best system, as I've mentioned several times, for controlling individual sow intake, as for feed wastage as well. So you do reduce your variation in body condition scores. It's a relatively low to moderate cost compared to the other ones. A simple pen design, you have a lot less penning. Um, some disadvantages, you do have a steep learning curve. This is where it kind of gets into what can your staff manage, what they're capable of. Internet technical support to help run the ESF systems, durability, reliability of the equipment. Once again, I have moving parts in there. Um, if something goes down, do I have the capability of repairing it or do I need to get help? Animal well-being, you still have aggression around the feeder, but during feeding it's controlled for. I think the main, the main point to say from all this pros and cons is that all of these systems can be managed well to a standard of animal well-being that we should expect. The small group pen, regardless of floor feeding, trickle feeding systems, the electronic sow feeder and free access. How you manage that housing system is going to have a bigger impact on sow well-being than the actual system itself. <clears throat> Other welfare components that we had to consider, which I haven't even touched on, I'm just going through the housing system, which shows you this is a very complex puzzle, really. Static versus dynamic housing. How do you want to allot your sows? I'm going to put all my gilts in a pen together, then I'm going to take all my sows, and do I block them by parity, or am I going to block them by size? Group size, floor space allowance, what time do I want to actually put them in a group pen? Feeding strategy, do I bump feed, how many times a day? I'm not even going into the details of that. It's just showing you that it's, it's really complex. You have to make a lot of decisions. So I'm going to let you know what we did and why we chose what we did. So for now, we're still using a breeding stall or an individual stall for 35 to 42 days. A sow then is moved into a group pen for 67 days, and this is the majority of what our system looks like. And then the lactation goes back into an individual farrowing stall for 30 days. So why are sows kept in individual stalls for 35 to 42 days? These are some of the questions that our customers ask us. Well, I thought I could use the term crate-free. That's a semantics terminology understanding there, because we're not crate-free. We still use farrowing crates. We're probably not going to be getting rid of those. So teaching or telling our customers and letting them understand what the proper terminology is. We're group housing. We keep them in group housing from 35 to 42 days after they're mated, and then they go into fairing crates later. 
So we chose 35 to 42 days because of sow well-being, protection, maintaining your litter, and pregnant checking as well. Based on some science, and I know Jennifer is going to be speaking about hers, her study where she showed on mixing, as time of mixing. At the time, we looked at Dr. Rob Knox's study and Stevens et al. 2015, showed that when placed in group pens at three to seven days compared to 35 to 42 days, the sows struggled to conceive, increased some aggression, caused some abortions, leg inflammation and swelling. And because of all this, we decided we'll go with 35 to 42 days. So which housing system is used? We went with the small group pens and free access system. I'd say 80% of our group housing is small group pens, 6 to 12 sows. And the other 20% is free access stalls, so about 30 to 35 sows per pen. Why we chose that is implementation. We wanted to have a small learning curve, ease of management, risk management for our safety purposes, and geographical location hindrances for a lot of our places don't have internet connection yet. We're working on that, but it takes a while. <laughs> so scientific comparison of small group pens and free access stalls, we did do a study out in Colorado in the same farm. We had both the small group pens and free access. So we want to do a longevity study and see what the differences were. So here we're just looking at sows that were parity to when they entered either the free access stall or the small group pen. So we had 287 sows that entered at the free access stall on parity two and 283 that entered in the small group pen at parity two. So our retention rate or stayability that stayed in, in the herd was no different after four turns up to P5. So no differences there. No differences in piglets born alive from the first turn all the way to the fourth turn. Number of piglets weaned, we saw no differences either. This is on parity two sows going to parity five. We did the same thing for parity three sows. And this time I had a little bit less than what I'd like to have, but we had 181 that entered in the free access our P3s and 187 that entered into the small group pens at P3. We saw no difference in retention rate over four turns or from a P3 to a P6. Um, no differences in number born alive after four turns. We did see a difference in piglets um, weaned on the second turn, but by the time we got to the fourth turn, there was no differences whatsoever. So at the end of the day, it really didn't change anything when it came to longevity for the sow or her overall productivity on a, on a long-term basis. So once we completed the study, we kind of said, if I can't justify the extra cost of the free access stall, it's not improving productivity or performance or well-being, then I might as well go with the small group pen. So conclusion from that study, no differences in sow lifetime productivity whether allotted to the free access system, they were kept at 27 square feet per sow, or the small group pen, and they were at 24 square feet. Cost between the two systems, like I mentioned before, quite a big difference. Small group pens at 225, free access starting at 305 because of the space. So like I said, moving forward, all the group housing systems will be small group pens in Smithfield. So why don't we use ESF? We get that question a lot of, have you tried it? Are you going to try it? Just to give you kind of a background. In 2005, an internal trial evaluating the three housing systems compared stalls. We ran that trial for two years. We had three separate farms that were set up. On farm number one, we had the ESF versus the individual stall. Farm number two, we chose a small group pen with quarter stalls and a trickle feeding system compared to the individual stall. And then on farm three, we used the full, uh, small group pen again, but this time we used a full length stall with a drop feed system compared to the individual stall. So the results of that study, for two years study, we learned that we measured everything from time it took to do all the different labor requirements. So they had to measure how long time to take you to vaccinate your sows. How long did it take you to actually scrape the pens? What we learned Sow productivity was similar. We saw no differences. Number born alive, number weaned between the two systems in each of the farms or across all the farms. 
Lesion scores, however, were higher after mixing in the ESF and the full, st the full stall, the small group pen with the full stall in the dump feeding compared to stalls that were quarter inch stalls and the um, trickle feeding system. The labor requirements, so this really goes into how long it takes the, the staff to do their tasks on a daily basis. So we learned here that to manage group house sows was least, uh, it took the least amount of time to do their labor requirements for the day was the individual, the quarter stall with the trickle feeding system compared to the ESF and the full stall with the dump feed system. And that was specifically for vaccination, scraping pens, and moving the sows. We saw no differences in employee accidents or near misses for our staff. And cost of maintaining the ESF feed system was significantly greater than all other housing systems. This was only due because our air compressor pump kept going out that was operating the door on the system, so we had to keep replacing that air compressor pump. So overall, our kind of conclusion from this was that more time to conduct routine cell management tasks, it was more cost to maintain our ESF feed system because of that air compressor replacement, that using the ESF as a retrofit created issues with solid and slatted flooring, that was a big um, complaint we had from the farm staff there. When we had to put in the ESF, you're going to a really large group pen, and the solid and slatted portion of the flooring wasn't really matching where they were laying. And so cleaning took a lot longer in there. It took you more time to train your gilts to get them used to the ESF system, and requires higher skilled employees to operate the computer. And what their words were is that it requires more training for employees beyond animal care, so more training just in general, which takes away from our time to do animal care. We had a lack of confidence for emergency backup plans. We always want to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. What if there's a catastrophic event, power goes out, we don't have generators, how are we going to feed our sows? We always have to have that plan in place. And the learning curve, like I mentioned, for the new employees and how to get used to running the system. So what space allowance do we use at Smithfield? We're currently using at absolute minimum at 18 square feet per sow. I'd say there's only a few that are at 18. The majority of them are between 19 and 24 square feet per sow. We chose this because there's several papers on um, looking at square footage alone, finding that 15 square feet from the Hemsworth paper actually compromise well-being, but 18 square feet provides sufficient space. Consider worker safety. You've heard me say it before. These walk-through gates really helps for just better well-being because your employees can access your animals better. And it helps them feel more safe when you are vaccinating. So make sure your employees have easy access to your animals because you want them walking the pens. So how do we go through these decisions? We make them because, well, we went with the small group pen with quarter or half stalls, six to 12 sows per pen. Feed once a day. We allot based on our gilts and sows. So all the gilts go into a pen together, and then our sows are sorted by size, not by parity. We provide an absolute minimum of 18 square feet, but majority is 19 to 24. And we suggest using walkthrough gates. So that's pretty much a summary of what Smithfield's using today. We made those decisions based on scientific evidence that was available, risk management for our employees, ease of sow management for our employees, and economics. So in summary, you've heard me say this before, is how you manage the sow will have a bigger impact on animal well-being than the housing system itself. So making sure that your employees know how to take care for those animals, they know how to access those animals, and you make it easy for them that's going to have a bigger impact than the housing system itself. So implement what you and your staff are capable and comfortable managing. <laughs>